they still get the cocoa? Like, what's go- like, like legitimately? Like, I'm just asking this question. What's going on? Like, I'm just asking. Like, what what are we doing? If you've tried anti-aging serums, wrinkle creams, or new diets without success, realize it's not your fault. We've been misled about what works to combat aging. The solution doesn't lie in new diet trends or surgery, but in ageless glow. I've noticed wrinkles nearly vanish since taking it. I've specifically noticed my facial skin looking and feeling firmer. The best part is you see results instantly within days, not months or years. Learn more by going to www.glowwithnatalie.com. Furthermore, you'll get 38% off your first bottle if you order today, plus a 60-day money-back guarantee. Muchachos e muchachas. God has a sense of humor, and this week he is showing out. As you guys have already observed recently, the elites of many industries love the power grab. Of many industries like the music industry, Hollywood, the political establishment everywhere. And... It's just really funny to see divine justice hit them the way it did this week. Um, I'm going to start off with Foo Fighters, for instance. I did a video on this probably a couple weeks ago about punk rock and how we don't have punk rock anymore. You're not raging against the establishment as many would portray. Uh, you know, we were thinking of things like the Sex Pistols, you know, back in the uh, in the 70s when they were raging against this culture that w- was really legalistic in a sense. And well, they really broke the bounds by saying, no, we were, we're not going to be contained. You're not going to, you know, contain us or whatever. Like, we're going to be us no matter what. And nowadays, rock stars are just pansies and just caving to the establishment. Like, what the heck? Rage Against the Machine isn't even raging against the machine. They're raging with the establishment against the people. It's just, anyway, tangent. But I'm just saying, like, these rock stars are out of control. So bringing it to the Foo Fighters, a couple weeks ago, they announced that they were going to do a big concert and in order for you to attend you'd have to show proof of the dirty dirty and so I just kind of raged on it like you know this is just so ironic that you know rock and roll is about you know angst and uh, raging against the establishment all those things and then you have these little pansies who are going with the establishment narrative like all the time not all rock stars I'm just saying some of these so with that being said They were holding this concert. You were supposed to show proof of the dirty. And ironically, they had to postpone their concert. Why? Oh, because one of their band members or somebody. Oh, I know why. Because one of their teammates, I don't know if it's a band member or what, but one of their teammates, turn off, got the cocoa. Uh, how ironic, that, like pure irony, the Foo Fighters anticipated return to stage in Los Angeles has been postponed after someone in their organization tested positive for the cocoa. So, OK, let me retract it back. I thought this was a Madison Square Garden concert, but this is actually a Los Angeles concert. The rock band announced news of the postponement in their Twitter page on Wednesday. Despite having made every effort to follow CDC COVID uh, protocols and local laws, there has been a confirmed cocoa case with the Foo Fighters organization out of an abundance of caution and concern for the safety of the band, crew, and most of all fans. Saturday's show at the Los Angeles Forum has been postponed to a later date, the statement reads. The band said that the new date of concert will be announced shortly and that tickets are ready purchase for july 17th will be honored for the new date so here is the tweet here like just pure irony right last month the band announced in a press release that it's finally moving forward with its postponed 25th anniversary tour called the 26th anniversary tour food fighters first U.S. date of the 26th anniversary tour announced. The group said, having confirmed their appearances atop 2021 lineups of Lollapalooza, Bonnaroo, Bottle Bottle Rock, Foo Fighters are answering the burning question uh, of, are they doing any new shows with a resounding F yes? Uh, So anyway, just just some irony. That's all you got to know that they're just, it's pure 
irony hitting them. Like this is God allowing people to fall within their own traps and trip upon their own words. How are you going to require people to get the dirty, dirty? You can't even keep yourself from getting the cocoa. So what's the point? It's nothing but virtue signaling. Let's go to the next one. You guys probably heard about this one. Three fugitive Texas Democrats test positive for the cocoa after packing onto a private jet wearing no masks to flee to D.C. and meet with Kamala Harris. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this, uh, but there were some fugitive Democrats. So uh, 60 left wing lawmakers fled Texas in order to block a restrictive voting reform bill proposed by conservatives. They chartered two flights to Washington, D.C. that cost them $100,000. The group has since been staying at a plush hotel in the nation's capital and schmoozing with many high-powered politicians. They even met Vice President Kamala uh, during a closed-door meeting on Tuesday. Several of the Texas Democrats have publicly endorsed wearing uh wearing face masks, but it seems that they're not enthused about using the coverings in private. The Austin American statesman claims that the group has only used masks sparingly meetings uh, in meetings in D.C. Um, so there have been three Democrats out of this. Th- look at this. Pl- let me let's just like take a look at this photo really quick. Look at this photo. Not one mask, like not one precautionary (laughs) step taken uh, as they push on us, right? So they push us to wear the face diapers. They push us to get the dirty, dirty, but yet, you know, they're over here on private jets, which granted, you know, private jets, you can pretty much, you can do rules differently. Uh, That's just the nature of, of this, uh, of the thing. I mean, uh, I've been on one recently and yeah, it's, it's pretty cool because, you know, you, you're just around people who are familiar. Um, so you can usually bend the rules for for private jets. So I, I'll just give them that. But that's besides the point. It's the fact that they're being hypocritical. So <clears throat> several of the Democrats have publicly endorsed wearing face masks. Uh, they're not. Officials have not released the names of three Democrats who have contracted the cocoa. But they are now in self-isolation and will stay there for at least 10 days. The outbreak was discovered on Friday when one of the lawmakers tested positive after taking a rapid cocoa test. Others from the group were subsequently tested on Saturday morning and two more were found to be positive. Uh, One of the STEM One of them is said to be experiencing mild symptoms. All three of the infected officials are fully. (laughs) They're fully, you know what it, they got the dirty, dirty and they still got, this is what I mean. Like what in the world are we doing? What are y'all pushing for? What is this for? I'm just asking, like, I'm just asking just a question. Look, sorry, overlords that are watching like i'm just asking a simple question there's two major like stories right here the foo fighters pushing for the dirty dirty they still get the cocoa these democrats who push and advocate for face diapers and regulations and dirty dirties they still get the cocoa like what's like legitimately like i'm just asking this question what's going on like I'm just asking, like, what what are we doing? Texas State Representative Briscoe Cain told Fox News that he thought the news of the cocoa positive test was an excuse to avoid comeback and face a vote on the elections overhaul bill. I say prove it, Cain said of the positive results. They want a reason to do a 14 day quarantine. They don't want to come back and do their jobs if they really have it. Prove it. Oh, that's a good point. What if they have like a hookup like for a positive test or something? Uh, they, they went to the black market to get a positive cocoa test so they can quarantine even longer and just uh, stay a fugitive. That's, I mean, that that makes sense to me, too. Look at these hypocrites. Just like, oh, uh, just packed together. No face mat, like nothing. And I get it. The C- CDC probably changed the rules and all that. But I'm just saying this is just so hypocritical. Um, so yeah, they're just kind of repeating some details about the face diapers, how, you know, the Democrats are just, uh, hypocrites and not really using them at all and whatsoever, but they're test, they're definitely pushing it on us. In fact, uh, I believe in California, Los Angeles, particularly, they have reinstated their 
mask wear and all that. It's just pure hypocrisy. And then another God has humor news. And uh, well, I'll mention this at the end. A lightning strike. You guys saw this earlier this week. A lightning strike apparently allegedly struck the BLM uh, George Floyd mural in Detroit. Was it in Detroit? Ohio. It was in Ohio. Um, lightning strike, vandalism. Ohio mayor says that we may never know what destroyed the George Floyd mural. This is from the Detroit Free Press. A mural honoring George Floyd collapsed into rubble Tuesday in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, Toledo, Ohio. My bad. Uh, after authorities told local media outlets lightning hit it. And Toledo's uh, mayor is like, uh, we don't know what really did it, but there's some witness accounts. A witness told Toledo Fire and Rescue that the wall in which the mural was painted fell after a lightning bolt strike the building, according to WZZM-TV. The department told the station the lightning strike was the cause of the collapse. The Toledo Police Department told WTVG-TV that witnesses reported the mural was destroyed by lightning. And the station's Doppler radar showed a lightning strike in the area early Tuesday morning. There were thunderstorms in Toledo metro area between 4 and 5 p.m. Tuesday. And those storms contained frequent lightning strikes, the National Weather Service confirmed. So, all this to say, look. I just really wonder if we're going to have more senses, more God senses of humor events like this again. And I, I'm hoping I'm hoping this can become a series. And if it does, we can consider this episode one, God's sense of humor. And, and I, I really hope we have more events where it's like contradictory to what these big establishments, uh, mainstream elites want to push on us and yet it backfires every it backfires every single time this is what we call blue the blue and on conspiracy theorists they form these big conspiracies and they believe it they run with it and it always backfires it's just it's it's funny to watch but this even more so it was like one after the other after the other this week so i'm hoping that we see more hypocrisy and um God's humor moments like this because I want to turn this into a series. So guys, let me know what are your thoughts on the humor of this entire situation. The two cases of Foo Fighters, the Texas Democrats, uh, fugitives, and then, you know, the mural being struck by lightning. One thing that I was also going to say about the uh, the mural, it, it almost reminds me of an exodus when they formed the bull, you know, the, the golden bull, and they made an idol of out of it. It's just to me, like, and I think a lot of people have that sentiment that, you know, a lot of these people are just really worshiping this whole mainstream culture, uh, especially the the race card and, you know, all of this critical race theory. It just really feels like that. And I don't think that God is pleased. So um, let me know your sentiments in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching the channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and thank you for supporting. Um, guys, I will catch you in the next video. Muchachos y muchachas, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are a lot more videos like that and more on my new platform, NatalieDenise.tv, where you can also catch some of my old documentaries that you guys loved so much last year. That plus more. I just launched a new membership, Natalie Denise Exclusives, in which we'll host new content, very exclusive content, some of which is based and un popular with the mainstream, so therefore it has to be hosted there. Uh, please consider signing up at NatalieDenise.tv. Also, please remember that I have a merch store, NatalieDeniseGear.com, which is also linked in my description below, in which a portion of every single sale will go towards human trafficking, rescue, and aftercare. Thank you guys so much for your support. See you later. Goodbye.